people in the front office may have felt as though um, Bill Belichick would not be a great fit uh, due to, well, you know, maybe fundamental differences in how things are going to be handled. Most likely the most major issue possibly being them working for Bill Belichick under Bill Belichick, not with him and not as Bill Belichick being a subordinate to them. Thus the hiring of Raheem Morris, who has a, uh, a history with the Atlanta Falcons and ends up being named the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. What did you make of the hire? And, and of course, what does that mean for Bill Belichick? These jobs are getting filled up, and seemingly that may have been the most uh, job-appropriate possibility for Bill Belichick, and now you see Bill Belichick basically staring down the barrel of possibly not having an opportunity, not having a place to coach this upcoming season. First and foremost, I I don't understand how the Falcons was, that was the best spot for Bill Belichick. And I'll explain why. Number one, who's their quarterback? Bill Belichick, although the Falcons have a ton of talented offensive weapons and B. John Robinson, Drake London, Kyle Pitts, so forth and so on, the quarterback is a situation since Bill hasn't had Tom Br- uh Mac Jones was a pro bowler with Josh McDaniels. Mm-hmm. And then he just fell off a cliff. That's Bill Belichick. That's his fault. Why would you bring him into Atlanta with no quarterback? Because whatever quarterback comes in is going to be somewhat young. Uh, what's going to make it any different than the Mac Jones situation? Is he going to hire Matt Patricia and Joe Judge to be the coordinators? Oh, no. Like, what, what is he going to do? <laughs> and and so that. Bill Belichick needed to be with a team that had an established quarterback that he couldn't uh, mess with his psyche and take his confidence away because everybody is in Tom Brady. You can berate Tom Brady in a team meeting, and for Tom Brady, it's water off a of duck's back. It never happened. He's going to get out there and practice. It's nothing. You do that to somebody else, that may affect him. And that's what Bill Belichick does. He criticizes and berates players in team meetings in front of everybody because Tom was able to take it. Everybody doesn't have that mental toughness like Tom Brady. So you can't treat everybody how you treated Tom and think it's going to be okay. These, the players of today, they don't want to play for Bill Belichick, man. Somebody needs to say that. They don't want to play for Bill Belichick. Mm. And that's why he didn't get a job. That's why he probably won't get a – some team after next season will fire a coach and say, oh, our defense, our offense is fine. We got to fix our defense. And that's where he comes into play. Oh, well, does he really come into play? Because he wants to be in charge of everything. Bill Belichick is the greatest defensive coach we've seen in the National Football League. I'm going to give him that credit. But when it comes to the offensive side of the ball, without 12 under center, nah, nah, can't do it. (laughs) He's set in his ways, LeVar. He wants to control the draft. He wants to control the personnel. Look at what you've done with the New England Patriots. You tell me a skilled guy outside of Gronk and Tom Brady that's going to the Pro Bowl in New England under Bill Belichick. You can't. You tell me an offensive player that they've drafted in the la- first two rounds in the last six, seven, eight drafts that ha- has received a second contract from the New England Patriots. You can't. And so is it he's drafting the wrong guys or is it the lack of development on offense or is it both? And so I don't want that guy as my coach because this is an offensive league. Mm. This is an offensive league. If you don't score points, you can't win. And his team's had the hardest time of doing that. So I don't want Bill Belichick as my head coach if he wants to be in control of everything because you've shown your track record has shown offensively you can't get it done. Your teams just cannot get it done year after year after year without Mr. Brady. Mm. Well, I'll say this and looking at 
uh, Raheem getting getting hired. He is one of those guys that players do relate to. Um, has a great personality, has a great way about him. Guys buy into him. He's the type of guy that you'd actually, you know how coaches force you to go hang out at their house. Like, come over, have a meal. Like, You don't mind going to hang with Raheem. Come on, man. You're not, not only not, do you not, not mind, you hitting him up. Like, hey, Ra, <laughs> what you got going on tonight? We kicking it? Hey, and, and, and like, you look at this Rams team this year. And you look at this Rams team since he's been the defensive coordinator. He's quietly done as masterful a job of coaching a young defense as as anyone else has in the league. I mean, I mentioned Spags and his brilliance earlier and, and what he's been able to do and that defense being so formidable and actually carrying the uh the Chiefs this season. Well, that that Rams defense, they carried the Rams this year. And they did some amazing things. Everybody knows Aaron Donald, but you had Jonah Williams balling, Byron Young, Ernest Jones balling, Kobe you know, you Turner, had, Turner. Yeah, I mean, you had Fuller in the backfield. You had John Johnson, the third in the back. You you had a group. This this is a young defense that seemingly I don't know if what happens with with uh, Raheem leaving now, but. It seemed to be a defense hitting in the direction where if they could hold their offense together and get some guys, you know, healthy, that they could be right back in the mix to go into a Super Bowl again. So to me, when I look at Raheem Morris and you know him from the character standpoint, he has been a head coach, was in a room head coach, was was in Tampa. Um, it didn't end well, but, uh, you know, there were a lot of conversations as to the debate as to why that could have been looked at the way that it was. But I'll tell you what, in terms of that relatability and, and somebody who brings a level of energy and, and young energy, even though he's not super young, he's not old, but he brings an energy to this Atlanta Falcons team, a familiarity to this Falcons team that probably will be welcomed and will be, um, you know, very, very, very well received. So good luck to to him. It'll be an interesting conversation continuing. I don't. I don't. Lamar, what, what's your thoughts on Belichick? I don't. And you, I you don't probably think said I see this him. during the week. What, what What was your thoughts on I, him as of now not being hired? I just think that it's it kind of falls along the lines of what you're saying. Today's today's football player and today's athlete is very different than yesterday's. And the things that were seemingly working, and not seemingly, they worked. I mean, he's the greatest coach in the NFL in the history. Some may debate Lombardi or whatever, but he's Belichick to me is the greatest coach of all time in the NFL. But the way things are handled, the way you hear things talked about, the the Patriot way, and all those different things, and the way you you're able to berate a player and this, that, and the other. You can, and I want to be very clear on this. You can berate a player, like yes. you can be like, yes. "What the f are you doing?" Like, of course, that you is can. effing crazy to be effing doing that effing s, right? You can, you can go at a player the same exact way. That's not what the debate is. The debate is, is you can't be a a coach that the player perceives as you don't care about me. It's not going to ever work. It's just business will never work again. It will never work ever again. And and so today's athlete, you have to be able to relate to them in a way where they believe in you, they trust in you, and most importantly, if you ask me, they feel that you care. 